Welcome back to Blender Frenzy. I am Justin, and this is the last tutorial in the Old Man series, the fifth tutorial total, but the fourth tutorial about the hair and changing the hair color. If you haven't seen the other ones, go back and check those out. But we are going to talk about color grading, specifically using the masks that we animated to create an alpha mask to import into the video sequence editor so that we can do our color grading in there. So let's first see what we have in the compositor so far. We can bring down that saturation or up that saturation a little bit here. You see where the white blown out part, portion of the face over here, uh, you don't want to have color in here because this just looks fake. So it's got to be desaturated enough to where that's pretty much white there. Um, and then you can adjust the the color and the hue and the way you can do that too if you click on the color itself um, if you leave the saturation where it is which looks different for some reason why does that look different hmm but if you play with the saturation that's what that does um, if you leave the saturation where it is you can just change the hue by going around the color wheel. You see that H goes just goes around the color wheel. You gotta make sure you are in hue saturation value. Uh, if you're in RGB, you have different options. Um, but uh, And your value too. So bring up that value to kind of match the side of the face and what that would be. And then change the color of the hair accordingly. And it's gonna be the same thing in this this looks like it's just going to intensify it and bring that value up or down but this isn't a lesson on color grading this is actually a lesson on creating that mask we don't want to render this out so let's say we get it to where we want it like this and then we render out all of our image sequence and then we decide no you know we want to change the color uh to blue or pink or green so then we come over here and we change our color uh, what we have to do is render out an entire new image sequence and it's going to take a long time to do that if we have to do that for every single change so if you know me in my past videos i like to just create a black and white mask that's animated which is this one and if we scrub through the timeline you can see that's our animated mask we will only have to render this image sequence once and then when we import it into our video sequence editor we will use this image sequence as a mask uh, to do color grading in the VSE or the video sequence editor. And that way we can change the color on the fly during the animation. And we don't have to re-render out our animation every single time. Before we do that, this is something I just found out, is that in the video sequence editor, it doesn't have a color to black and white like this. There, I wish that it had this, this option, but it doesn't have this option. Instead, what it has is a color a hue correct. So this is what our only option to make things black and white in the video sequence editor. And it has a little bit of a different effect. So if we plug that in and just mute this for a second, I can take each one of these points, I'm just shift selecting these, and all the ones in the middle like that, I'm just gonna hit X to delete. And now we have one on either end, I'm just gonna bring that down. Make sure you're on the S, which is saturation. And then that has the same effect. So I'm gonna mute this one as well. So you can see what this effect has, and then I'm gonna mute that and then put the, pull this in. Now it looks almost the same. However, it's not as fine-tuned, meaning you're gonna see that our feathering doesn't work as well with this here. For some reason, it just doesn't work as well, and I don't know why. But you can see that the edges are a little bit more thick and have a little bit more spilling. But you can see like how different this is. This is a lot smoother, even though it's still a little bit too much. But if we put this one on, you can see it's just brighter. So it can make it feel a little more fake. And you can see how, there we go, that, that feather isn't really working that well. So use this as your guide. And it all depends on your footage. And then you may just have to go back and manipulate your mask and the feather around it. Now, here is where that trick that I showed you earlier comes in very, very handy. Um, is let's say you decide you want this mask to be a little bit more feathered. Okay, so you have something like this. 
but that's not enough feather, at least maybe not right here. It's not enough feather, so you want to feather that more. Well, what you'll have to do is feather that to your liking, and instead of having to feather it for every single keyframe here, we just come to our top layer and then deselect everything and then select all the ones we want to interpolate that to. Just make sure you have that one selected. Control R or come up here to mask, animate, three key points of selected shapes. And then that way that feather isn't gonna change. Oh, except for it did. Because I did not have this one selected. Let's try that again. There we go. So now the feather is staying that way. So then you wouldn't have to necessarily go back and re-key every single feather. But you're still going to want to come in and um, use this here to make sure that you get the results of the color you like here using these because these two are in the video sequence editor and this is what we're going to do. So we would just copy the same settings once we import our footage into the video sequence editor. But again, we're not using this for the color. This is just to make sure we adjust our mask and our feather. So once we do that, we are good to go. So connect your black and white alpha mask here and don't forget to save it. Come over to your rendering and then make sure we have render result selected and then press F12 and you see we still have this ugly little face. Go to our output tab and down here we wanna check compositing under post-processing. Press F12 and you see black. And that is because we need to connect this not to our viewer, but to our composite. So I'm just gonna connect this to the composite. And now if we come back, F12, we can see our beautiful craftsmanship here. So go back to frame one. I'm gonna just hit F12, pick random frames, see if this is giving us the result that we want. Looks good, go back to frame one. I'm gonna turn off auto keying now just in case I accidentally move something. So I'm gonna do double forward slash IMSQ. Okay, so in an image sequence folder, we have old man hair alpha folder, and then we have OMHA, and then underscore here at the end so that we can separate the file extensions that will automatically be added. I'm gonna uncheck overwrite. I'm gonna change PNG to JPEG because this is just going to be a black and white image. I'm just gonna choose black and white and gonna save it. And we are ready to go. I just make sure all of our dimensions and everything is good. 24 frames per second, yep. Okay, so Control F12 will render that image sequence out into the folder that you've created with the file name you've created. And if we open this up, we can see we've already, it's already started. If we look at our thumbnails, you can see this is what's happening. All right, so when it's done rendering, let's come up here to the plus, go to video editing and video editing. And I'm just gonna get rid of this here. Hover your mouse over here, shift A to edit an image sequence. Go to your original footage, make sure it start at one and you can click the name if it's not and make sure it starts at one. A to select all of that, add in an image strip. And we get our original footage here. I'm gonna shift D to duplicate that up on the Y and I'll explain why in just a minute. Shift A to add another image sequence. This time navigate to your mask and same thing, select all. And let's press home. Zoom out here. I'm just gonna take these two handles here, grab control and just bring those to match our mask here. And then let's take the mask and press H to hide. And then with this still selected, let's come over here to rename this. I'm just gonna name this mask so that we can know for sure that this is the one we need to select. Then select the top footage one, go to modifiers, add strip modifier mask, and make sure strip is checked. Go to mask and then mask and nothing happens because we haven't changed anything. But now this mask here, if we shift right click, you can see this mask here, is going to be applied to the top strip here for just this. And you can see that is what we have, pretty cool. Now make sure that this strip is alpha over because we wanna make sure that that is bleeding through. If it's not, this is what you'll see. You'll see something like this. So if you have cross or replace, then you won't see anything underneath it. Just make sure that it is alpha over. Okay, go back to the modifiers. And this is where we're gonna add those same two modifiers before, the Q correct and then the color balance. So you can see these are the two that we had in our compositor. Come over here. Yep, these two here. 
So we're just going to copy these settings. Well, we're going to copy them as much as possible. Uh, we can't actually copy and paste to my knowledge, but I'm going to shift select the middle points here and delete. Make sure, you, of course, you're on the S for saturation. Bring this down all the way, and now you can see it's being saturated. And like I was saying, see how the feather isn't really that good here. So that's why I was saying to make sure your mask is feathered the way you like it here. You just want to make sure that that looks okay here. And one way I can do that is just bring this up like I did in the last one. You can see how that is feathered a little bit better. And then bring another point in here and just bring that down. So that's a little bit better. But I found another trick that you can do in the video sequence editor is that if you actually add another mask, which if we close these, you can see it brings it to the bottom. I'm going to choose our mask again and then just bring this to the top or it doesn't matter if the top or the second, the masks need to be on the second too. And that seems to have a lot better of a feathering effect. Uh, and blending that in. So if I hide one of them, you can see the difference. So this is just one mask and that's with two of them. And you can maybe even do another one. Um, I can see over here. Now this just looks like maybe the placement of the mask um, that I just need to reanimate that. But come over here to frame one where I know a lot of my stuff is set the way I want it. And that doesn't look too bad. Again, uh, one mask and two mask. You can see that feathering is a lot better. So add as many masks here uh, as you need. You can also add a mask here in each of these modifiers. So if I just want the mask to apply to this modifier, but not the color balance modifier, um, I can just come up here and choose mask from here. So that has a similar effect. Uh, I don't want that there because I want it to be applied to both. And now I scrub through here, you can see that my hair is pretty white. I may even be able to duplicate this hue color saturation modifier. Um, bringing this down again here though, instead, let's make that a little bit more white. Uh, let's come to our color and let's play with this here a little bit. So like that, okay, I don't want that. That's going to not help us a lot. Bring that up a little, maybe down a little. Uh, let's go back to frame one because that's the good frame here. But now I can change the hue, the color there and here as well. <laughs> and that looks all right. It's not perfect. It's kind of rough, especially in some areas here. I can see I just need a better placement of the mask. But that is how you do it. And that's how you change the color of your hair, making masks using the footage as a way to get all of those little tiny hairs in there as much as we can to be able to mask around complicated edges like that. Uh, and of course here, this is just, like I said, not a very good job. You can see that spilling over here. And that's because I just didn't look, I didn't pay attention. Shift, right click, you can see. I've got a lot of that background right over here. Um, so yeah, I just, I would need to go back and readjust my mask in the animation. Um, but I'm not going to do that because this is basically just for you to show how you can do this effect. So I'll let you be as meticulous and detailed with that as you want. But I like this because we can just hit play. And then as it's playing, I can change the color of my hair and see it in real time. And that way, if you're working on a project and your boss is like, no, actually, I don't like that color hair. I want a different color hair. Well, now you don't have to re-render out everything again and wait for that to render. You have it ready to go at, a, at the click of a button. But I'm going to zero out this saturation here with these, and we are going to put our old man face over this. So let's do that. <laughs> go back to frame one and get our image sequence for our face. And there we go. And you can see that the hair doesn't quite match what we have on the face. So I'm going to change that accordingly. So this is a little bit darker and a little bit more yellow color. So let's go a little bit darker here, up here. 
maybe down here as well like this and then a uh, little bit more of kind of like a yellowish tint to it. Eh, it's maybe too too much. Try this one here. Yeah, that's not that's not too bad. Yeah, that looks a lot more believable. So that is how you do it. So of course you'd want to add in your audio. So we got to go get our original clip, our movie clip. Okay, and I don't need the footage because we've got our own now. And this is too short because we're at 24 frames per second. I think it was done at 30 frames per second. Uh, close enough there, so something like this. Hi, welcome to Blender Frenzy. My name is Justin, and this morning I woke up, and now I'm old. Okay, perfect. So now we've got all of this stuff together. Let's come over to our rendering. And this time we don't want sequencer. So under post-processing, we can uncheck compositor and click sequencer, press F12 to see what we have. Just check a few frames to make sure that it's rendering okay there. Looks like everything's good. Okay, so go back to frame one and double forward slash. You can put any directory and file name here that you want. Um, Instead of JPEG, I'm going to choose FFmpeg. Make sure if you have black and white checked, you want to check color, unless you want the whole thing to be in black and white. Under encoding, I'm going to choose MP4. I'm going to leave all the default settings here. I like this medium quality good. It's good balance between quality and file size. Uh, so everything here is good. Um, I want to have MP3 as my audio, and the defaults there are also good. All right, make sure you have the resolution that you want and frame rate that you want. And I think we're good to go. I'm just going to go ahead and save it. So before I rendered this out, actually, I went back and added a quick color balance to the old man face here, just so that it uh, blended a little bit better uh, with the footage. You can see, again, all personal preference. So let's go back to rendering. And now we can save it and F12 to render that out. And then once that is done rendering, you should have a video with whatever container you chose over here and we can take a look after we're done. Okay, so this is what we have. Hi, welcome to Blender Frenzy. My name is Justin, and this morning I woke up, and now I'm old. Hi, welcome to Blender Frenzy. Okay, so this is how you can make yourself look old in Blender. A complete tutorial there, um, minus the face markers. If you wanna know how to remove the markers on your face. I made a whole tutorial dedicated solely to that. I'll leave a link to it here and in the description, but that is it. So have fun with this. You can get really creative with this. And uh, if you do make something uh, and you want to show it to me, send me a link to, to something, upload something. And I'd, I'd love to see what you guys come up with. All right, until the next one, I'm out.